What's up everyone? Michelle Alexandria coming at you with a quick update video on my LG C9. I am loving this. It's been two weeks now and I am loving this TV. I am finally starting to get my settings dialed in. I figured out uh, uh, what settings I like for my SDR. For my SDR. Um, so I'm going to show you those settings real quick and then I'm going to talk a little bit about what I like and don't like about the TV so far. This is going to be a relatively quick video. I'm in handheld mode on my iPhone right now. And I may buy a new camera uh, in the next two weeks. That Sony, that new Sony uh, camcorder is looking pretty tasty to me. Um, so here are my settings. This is vivid mode, but I actually found another mode that I really, really like right now. I, I'm dialing in my settings um, and I really like ISF S expert bright mode right these days. So for my <clears throat> ISF expert bright mode, I'm at, I'm still going through and calibrating something. So I don't even know if I should show you this because I'm actually going to end up changing this because I discovered some other things about it. And it, this is going to look blue on camera because, you know, I when you record, when you record an OLED for, at least for me, on my various crappy cameras, everything ends up looking blue. And that's not, a, that's not at all how, how this TV looks in real life. So here, here are my current settings for expert bright. And like I said, I got some ideas for calibrating the reds and the luminates and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to show you those modes in a few days. I have promised myself I wasn't going to do a lot of videos on my TVs anymore, just because I don't want this to be a TV channel and I don't want it to be focused solely on my TV. I'm brand, I want to get back to the content I really like doing, um, which is interviews, reviews, things that I, entertainment news. Um, and I, I don't want to get pigeonholed in a thin OLED girl or whatever. So or the girl who changes TVs all the time. So anyway, back to this. Um, so I have my OLED light set to 100. And again, this is the Esper Bright Room mode. I have my OLED light set to 100. I can always turn on some of my picture processing because what? Because I don't understand this idea you're supposed to turn off all your picture processing. We buy these TVs because of the picture processing. I, I don't get all these so-called professional reviewers and stuff who turned everything off and then complain about the TV. I'm like, no, the whole point of these TVs is to use the built-in picture improvement, uh, picture processing features. So I'm one who likes to turn that stuff on. So I have my AI picture turned on, my OLED light up to 100. And don't worry, I'm going to have burning, I'm buying like a five-year warranty from it. Geek Squad in the next few days. I have contrast set to 81, and, and I still play with that a lot. Um, I have my brightness set to fit the 51. Although a lot of times I change, I change, I've been playing around with changing it from super bright to, to from 51 to like 48. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I'm one who likes sharpness in my picture again. I'm buying a 4K TV. I want my stuff to be sharp and crisp and clean. I don't understand why why so-called professionals always say, oh, turn your sharpness down to zero. I'm like, no, that makes zero sense to, sense to me. So I always play around. Plus, I wear glasses, so I like to kind of over-sharpen to compensate for the fact that I wear glasses. And I don't want to wear glasses all the time when I watch TV. So sometimes I bump my sharpness up up even higher than 26 just to compensate a little just to compensate for the fact that I wear glasses but for now 26 works for me uh, my color I, I play around with the color normally this is set to 50 I bump up my color to 56 um, sometimes I have it I'll have it at 62 63 because I do like that poppy kind of vibrancy that you get from like a Samsung TV or LED TV. So sometimes I'll bump up my color volume so that the color will really start to pop on the TV. The tint is at zero. Uh, expert control, my expert controls I have at uh, dynamic contract, I have dy dynamic contrast turned off. Although a lot of times I, do, I will have it turned on, I'll set it to low or medium. So my super resolution, I generally uh, set the medium. 
Um, I'm not sure what it does, but I like having it set to medium. Uh, my color gamut, I don't know why I have that set to wide. I normally have this set to auto. So let me change that. Uh, I keep my gamma at 2.2. Uh, my white balance, I don't really, met some. I've been playing around with the white balance lately and I've been getting interesting results. So norm, the default setting is warm too and that's normally what I keep it at. But don't be scared to play with all of this stuff because you can easily go in and reset stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I really like OLED TVs, just simply because it's easy to reset. And wow, the transparency on the, on, I have a transparency setting on this TV that I need to turn off because I can't see stuff. When I'm within the uh, within these settings, uh, so then you have high point red zero, green zero, blue zero. But I found some really interesting settings. So I've been playing around with the red, green, and blues, and I actually really like the results. So some of the uh, red, green, and blue changes I made. Um, you go apply, and then I like to always apply all as I go through. And then you go back up here, I, and I wish I could show real content on YouTube, but the problem is YouTube just constantly blots. And oh, and then for peak brightness, again, that's one of the key features of this of this TV. So I like to have my peak brightness really high, and you and the colors really pop when it's set to high. This TV gets really scary bright. I mean, I, I was actually playing uh, Call of Duty earlier, and I activated the HGIG mode, and wow, the game looks so different now. So amazing. I'm very happy with this upgrade from the B7. It really is. It's not night and day different. Um, it's not a night and day difference, but you definitely can tell the difference between uh, the C9 and the B7. You really can. Um, and it's in the little things. It's in the little improvements that this TV does over the B7. Um, it's hard to explain. And I don't know if it's because of a huge size jump or what, but there is a difference between the B7 and B9. With that said, I, oh, let me finish this. I'm gonna go, so I showed you the S, oops. Let me go back in here. And again, I'm trying to keep this in focus. Hold the camera, hold my iPhone and I can't wait to, I really want to get a new iPhone, but the new iPhones are coming out in four months. So I got to put up with this SR for another four months. Um, so I forgot where I was. Oh, here we go, expert. And I may do a likes and dislike video um, and then a final, uh, on Sunday and then a final impressions video in a week. Um, so then I go into picture options and these are my settings. I basically have everything turned off, but a lot of times I do have this stuff turned on as well. Um, low black, black levels, I normally keep the low because when you have it at the high, it just makes the blacks look a little grayish. It, the blacks look gray to me. Uh, motion eye care, sometimes I have that, I'll have that turned on because again, um, looking at a 65 inch TV kind of gives me a headache sometimes. So I will sometimes turn on motion eye care. My true motion settings, I actually have, I use user settings and I also switch between clear and smooth. But again, Everyone complains about the stutter. The review, quote unquote, professional reviewers always whine and claim, complain about the um, motion issues on OLEDs, but they, don't, they always turn off the true motion features. And I'm like, you turn that stuff off, you're gonna get the stuttering and stuff, you morons. So yeah, I I play around. I run high and cold between smooth and clear. I, I really like clear. Lately, I've been using my own custom setting. And for that, I generally have it set to uh, de-blur at 10, and I normally have jutter at about two, de-jutter at about three. And that actually provides a really nice steady shot on most content, it's really nice. So these are my recommended settings, or actually I'm not gonna say these are my recommended settings because then that sets me up for y'all like yelling at me about my settings suck. And this is my own personal preference, I'm not telling you. Uh, that these are the end all be all. I'm not claiming to be a professional calibrator and I'm always right or any of that crap. I'm just telling you this is what I'm doing right now for my for my OLED settings and I'm really liking it. So anyway, I think I am gonna return this TV 
and get the LG C10. I was at Best Buy today and looking at the C10. I gotta say, the C10 is looking pretty tasty. It, it looks really nice. Um, I don't see where it's a huge jump from this TV. I, I won't say that, I won't go that far, but in order for me to switch it to the C10, it would only cost me about $350. And remember, I do have a 20% rebate coming back to me from LG. So that basically means I will only end up spending about $2,100, $2,200 for a, for a C10. And I'm just someone who likes to have new stuff. I don't like going back. And I understand that the differences between the C9 and the C10 is probably very minimal, but there is a difference. And I would rather have the new hotness and just spend another couple of hundred dollars to get that. Otherwise I will always be like, oh man, I should have bought that. Because the problem with buying older technology is the support goes away quicker. And especially when you're talking about LG, like my B7, I bought the B7 when the B8 was out. And I was like, I didn't, I did not want to spend the extra four or $500 to get the B8 or this actually at the time the C8. I didn't want to spend the extra four or $500 and I always regretted not doing that. And the fact of the matter is the B7 isn't supported by LG anymore. I mean, I do, they will come out, replace my panels and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't get any software re support really. Um, we don't get, you know, you get screwed on the apps and all that kind of stuff, which is absolutely ridiculous and disgusting on LG's part. So I would just rather just bite the bullet, spend the extra three or $400 and get it now. I don't understand people who are spending $2,000 to, Two, three, that, or two, that over two thousand dollars on a TV, and then saying, "Hey, I'm going to save. I would rather save three hundred dollars and get last year's model." And I'm just going to like that. I call that penny wise, pound foolish, because you might as well. If you're spending over two thousand dollars on a TV, then you know spending another three hundred or four hundred dollars to have the current year model just seems like a no brainer to me a little bit. Yeah, the differences aren't that huge right now, but it, it may be in a year or two when LG stops supporting the C9 or when all the software updates come out. But the one benefit of having the, the C9 versus the C10 is the fact that this TV has been out for a year now and all, most of the bugs are, have already been worked out. There have been software patches to fix almost all the initial issues. Whereas the C10 is brand new, so of course it's going to have some buzz out of the box. Um, so yeah, that's you have to take that in, into consideration as well. So I'm almost talking myself out of returning this TV for the C10. But yeah, I'm loving this TV so far. So anyway, talk to you guys later. Bye.